All right, guys and gals, it's about that time of day again here, folks. Back in the action. Hope you guys enjoyed the weekend. Always great to be here with you guys. Had a great day out there, but you know what? I always remind you guys, right? We're only as good as our next trade. Time to get ready for tomorrow's trading session. It's about that time to get back to get back to work. After all, it's Monday evening. It's July the fifteenth, two thousand and nineteen. My name is Joseph, by the way, and as always, this is your nightly newsletter. Now, don't forget, guys. I help traders find high quality trades setups using a really simple three-step rule-based trading strategy that I teach and trade every morning with all of our clients in the trade room. My job tonight, though, is a little bit different. My job tonight is to identify the best levels, the best setups, the best opportunities that we see setting up for tomorrow. That's Tuesday's trading session. And we have a lot to talk about. We'll cover the calendar for tomorrow. We'll dive into charts, oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. I'm going to jump in first on the oil because, as you probably saw, oil went into a nosedive this afternoon. And anytime I see a strong move in one direction, I always know what the plan's going to be. Let's dive into that oil here. First of all, opening up the oil chart here, that black gold, that Texas T. What do we know about oil right now? We know that oil spent a lot of time inside this range earlier on, but went up and then dumped right back down here. Now, guys, anytime I see a strong move in one direction like this, I know that that momentum tells me we can find key levels of resistance in this case, right, to sell it for another leg lower. So I'm looking for some sell setups right now on the oil market up inside some key levels of resistance to short back down. Now there's also potential here because I'm not sure if you've been paying attention on that or not, but this market is long-term bullish right now. So there is potential that we may see this thing snap and go right back to retest those highs tomorrow. It could easily happen. And I've got a couple big clues that I'm looking for tomorrow to know when it's safe to start buying it, right, instead of starting to sell it. So I'm looking for a sell right now to finish off that second leg, but I'd be, I'd be lying to you right now if I, if I said I wasn't looking for a possible long here as well. We'll talk about both sides, but most importantly, we'll talk about the big clue you'll need to look for to know whether you want to buy it or whether you want to sell it tomorrow. We're going to dive into that in a lot more detail on this video tonight. How about that? How about that S&P, though? Over on the S&P range, boy, bullish market here right now into a trading range. It's a range bound market. Anytime I see a range bound market, what's the word? The word is balance, right? Balance. Balance is the key word here. I've got some trend lines coming up, trend lines coming down, range right in the middle. That trading range tells me now where my buy zones are and tells me now where my sell zones are. In a trading range, I want to buy low. I want to sell high, and in tonight on the video tonight, we're going to talk about how I can sell high. Keep in mind, there's an overall bullishness to this market, so the buy pattern off the low is a little bit more aggressive, right, than the sell pattern off the high. We'll talk about both buy and sell on this, but at the same time, though, at what point, if this market starts going higher, should we start buying it? Because as you can see, I've got a couple levels of resistance overhead. So if you're an, if you're an S and P trader, you definitely want to stay tuned on this tonight because we're going to break down the entire plan, what to look for and what to avoid tomorrow in the trading session. How about the Nasdaq right now? Nasdaq is bullish, as you can see. Spent a lot of time though today, as you probably noticed, inside this little this little range here, which really makes this a breakout. Breakouts are not very trustworthy. That's the problem. We know we're bullish. It feels like it feels like I need some uh, you know some Dramamine, right? We're so high up here right now, right? Very lofty. I've got a lot of levels of resistance. I don't you know. Do, do you take Dramamine for for heights? I, I don't know. I don't know. Bad analogy. But the bottom line though is I am not. Uh, luckily, my jokes don't count very much in this newsletter. But the bottom line though is is that we are very high, right, on this chart. We're way way up there right now. I need an oxygen mask, right? We're so high up on this chart. I'd like to get a pullback here right now. That's what we're hoping for this morning in our trade room. Never got the pullback because, man, oh, man, I've got some great levels down here that I'm watching. So I'd like to get a pullback. Now, that pullback, just so you know, that's going to be a really deep, deep pullback. What do deep pullbacks tell me? 
Deep pullbacks have a very, very big red flag along with them. We're going to talk about deep pullbacks because it's a great deep pullback opportunity, but with a deep pullback, we get, well, we're going to talk a lot more about that in tonight's video. And then, of course, as we go higher here, again, much like the S&P, I got a bunch of resistance overhead here. So how do we do it, right? How do you buy as the market's going higher? I've got one very important pattern I'm looking for up here to to tell me when it's safe to be buying this market here as we go higher. I'm going to break into that in a lot more detail here tonight as well. How about that gold? Boy, you can definitely tell gold is waiting on something here this week. We're going to check the calendar here in a moment and find out what that something is. But as you can see here right now, higher lows, lower highs, moving average is all coiled up here right now, going sideways. This sucker's a range. Anytime we see a range bound market, I know the size of that range helps me identify the sell zones, helps me identify the buy zones. Yeah, I want to buy low. And of course, I want to sell high. I want to avoid that middle like the plague, right? You know mama, right? She says, don't fiddle with your middle. So I don't want to trade the middle there. I want to buy the low. I want to sell that high. I also want to keep an eye out for breakouts, right? Because there is a bit of a bullish momentum to this market, right? So if we push higher here, you know, those buyers, they want to get up to buy that, you know, up to that high there. So we'll talk about, you know, what point can I safely trade a breakout and what are some of the key levels of support and resistance that we can use to fade these breakouts along the way. Gold is looking great for buying low, selling high. We're going to go into these specific patterns we'll use for that here in just a moment here on the yellow metal. Then, of course, wrapping up here on the euro. The euro looks really comfortable, right? Just took its shoes off, kicked its feet up on the lazy boy. This euro looks very comfortable right now inside of this range. This is now, of course, one, two, three days inside the range here. It's getting comfortable around that 13,000 big round number. We're bullish here, of course, right into that trading range. That bull bias tells me now, right, I want to buy low. I want to buy low. That's the key here, right? I want to buy low. I want to keep looking for ways, right, to buy the low of that trading range. I can see one example of a great pattern that I'll be looking for tomorrow over here as well. So we've already seen a couple of these. We're looking to buy low here on the euro. Now, at what point can we confidently buy high, right? Because if it goes up, right, I want to sell back down. It's a range-bound market, right? It is, but because that bullishness is in play, I've got to be very careful here selling off that high. I've got one very specific pattern we'll talk about in the video tonight. And of course, right, we always know when a market's bullish before we go into a range, there's potential for a breakout. So we'll talk about breakouts. We'll talk about what it means to break out of that range because you can see here so far struggling, right? They are struggling to break free of that trading range. We'll talk about what they didn't get accomplished and that way you know what to look for, right, tomorrow if we do get that breakout. So quite a bit, as you can see here, to talk about tonight. Euro, gold, NASDAQ, S&P, and crude oil. Before we jump into the video tonight, though, before we break this all down and get our hands dirty, getting ready for tomorrow's trading session, I just want to remind you guys to make sure you join our mailing list. That way you never miss another great video. You may not be aware of this, but just before I publish my video to our YouTube YouTube channel, I send an email out to our mailing list. That way, everybody on our mailing list is the first people to know when the video goes live. That way, you get the prime time new information as soon as it's published. And joining the mailing list is very, very easy. I never send any spam or any junk like that. You can trust me on that. Only the good stuff. All right, I wouldn't, let's put it this way I wouldn't waste my own time, right, sending you guys garbage into your email box. I hate spam. I I know you hate spam. Only the good stuff coming from me every evening on this newsletter. And to join the mailing list, right, give me your first name, a real email address, please, and then hit that subscribe now button. And don't forget, guys, when you subscribe to join the mailing list, your job is not over. You still need to log into your email account, check your email, because I'm going to send you a welcome email. In that welcome email, there'll be two important things. One is a verification link, and the other 
there is a bunch of great free resources that I know you're going to love as being part of our community here at School of Trade and Sideways Markets. So don't delay. Join the mailing list. That way you'll be the first to know when I publish my nightly newsletter every evening. And then please don't forget, I'm always trying to make this video better for you guys. Would you do me a huge favor? Give me one minute of your, of your valuable time. I know you're busy just like I am, right? One minute though, in the comment section below, in your opinion, what's the most important thing I could teach a new trader? right? Especially all you experienced traders out there, right? If you could turn back the clock, in your opinion, what's the one word of wisdom? What's the one piece of advice that you would give, right, to your younger trader self, right? I know what mine would be, right? In fact, I've got a lot of things I would tell my, my younger self, right? First of all, stop trading so often, right? Less is more. Less is more. But guys, let me know where you are in your journey. What would you go back and tell your, you know, first six-month self, right? Or if you're brand new to this stuff, right, what do you wish you knew? In your, in your opinion, what's the most important thing standing in your way? What would I tell, what would I tell the 20-year-old Joseph? What would I tell myself, right, back when I was wet behind the ears, full of energy and excitement? I guess I'm still full of energy and excitement. But what would I tell myself, right, almost 15 years ago, right, more, more than 15 years ago now, right? Write that down in the comment section for me. And one more thing, guys. If you tune in every evening and watch this video, give me a thumbs up on that YouTube video. You know, it goes a long way to helping me expose this video to other people who can benefit from this knowledge as well. So drop me a comment in the comment section. What would you tell, right, your rookie version of you, right, not to do or what to do, right? And give me a thumbs up on that video. And don't forget, guys, if you have any questions here, please don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call the office. I know people are always worried about calling the phone number there, right? But I'm not a scary person, right? Call the phone number. I can answer questions about brokers, data, charting, or maybe you want information about our free trading courses or a free pass to attend our trade room. Don't be afraid to pick up that phone and call the office. I promise I'm not going to send you to some call center somewhere where you get bombarded by spam calls. That's not my style, right? I don't have time to do that. Only the good stuff. Call that toll-free phone number though. My wife, Megan, and I are always here in the office. We love talking to our clients. We love answering questions. That way, at the very least, even if you're not a client of mine yet, you can still get the good information that you need to save yourself time on any technology questions, strategy questions, or anything about becoming a client here at School of Trade. In the meantime, though, we got some work to do here, don't we? Let's get to work here. Let's get to work here this evening. Tomorrow is Tuesday. July the 16th, we are working our way through here, guys, this third week of the month. The first week of the month was kind of a week off, right, because of that holiday. Last week was kind of the sobering up week, right? And this week, I'm expecting to get some pretty good opportunities here in this third week of the month. Now, with that said, a couple things here. We are looking at July 18th, right? The 18th should ring a bell. The 18th of the month is usually when we see crude oil rollover. So keep your eyes on rollover as we go into the end of the week. I would imagine Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, be watching for rollover. And remember, right now on oil, we are trading the 0819. We will be rolling over most likely Thursday or Friday to the 919 contract. I'll walk you through this every step of the process in our trade room, right, this week. So don't worry about that. Just be aware we are watching roll over here as we go into the end of this week. Other than that, there really isn't anything that stands out here. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to hear from Jerome Powell. Oh, I know, that guy again. Yeah, that, you know what, that son of a, yeah. No, he's not going to be, he's not going to be doing as much damage as he did last week. This is just some opening remarks, right, at some conference in, uh, uh, in I believe it's Paris, uh, tomorrow afternoon. I don't expect that to have too much of an impact, but it may, you know, we, we may see, we may see markets slow down a bit before lunchtime tomorrow, but I'm not anticipating much of that tomorrow. That is, in all reality, kind of looking at this right now, that's really kind of the, you know, kind of the big news here this week. We got some housing 
Now, tomorrow, obviously, we got some big news tomorrow. We got retail sales at 8.30. We got industrial production at 10.15. We got housing, right, coming out at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I would imagine, just based on what we've seen in the month of July, I would imagine most of those trades that we're going to find tomorrow morning are going to be coming after 9 o'clock, you know, maybe between 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, right? It is summertime season. You know, my, I, I always I, I always do the same thing, though. My strategy is always the same. Get there early keep your eyes open right and find that next good trade right that's 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 all we do that's all we do every morning in our trade room we open up at eight o'clock eastern time we prep all the charts we identify the market conditions find our levels of support and resistance and then go hunting for those entry setups right where's my next good trade where's my next good trade it could happen at 8 15 it could happen at 11 15 we never know we get there early each morning trade room opens up at eight o'clock eastern time we get some big news tomorrow though 8 30 9 15 10 o'clock again i've had to guess i would guess later in the morning that latter half of the morning just because that's what we've seen a lot of lately but get to your desk early join me tomorrow morning in our trade room as an advanced member and we'll execute the strategy together as we see it. So that's the major news for tomorrow. And again, there's not, there really isn't anything that stands out on this on this calendar right now uh, like there was last week, right? Last week, there was quite a bit that we knew the markets will be waiting on. So we're definitely not too, you know, too concerned about that here this week. I am expecting to see, though, a pretty darn good week here, though, in our trade room and, of course, on this nightly newsletter. Speaking of the newsletter, let's get into these charts here. Let's get some charts going here tonight. I'm going to start off with oil. Then we'll grab the S&P. We'll grab some NASDAQ, of course, some gold and some euro. Now, I mentioned this earlier. We have a very strong move down right that pretty much came out this afternoon I'm not going to go into the why this happened but you know clearly something happened here right just as we went into lunch and the market right tumbles lower tumbles down into what I would call a spike in channel now spike in channel patterns are pretty important patterns because they really tell us exactly what and where to look for spike in channel patterns always tell me to draw off the base of the channel and the first pullback, and then look for a sell off that area, right? Spike and channel. So anytime I see a strong spike down, that thing kind of channels lower, right? Draw the channel low off that high, find where it runs into the spike, first pullback, right? That's typically where you're going to get the best setups to sell off a spike in channel. Same thing for the upside, right? Strong spike up, right? Channels out going higher. Mark up that high, mark up that low. And then again, it's the base of that channel, the pullback, right? You're looking for that pullback to buy, right? So when I see a spike in channel, I pretty much know what I'm looking for here tomorrow. And the best way in my experience to trade a spike in channel is to look for that nice deep pullback at that point the buyers will likely will likely think this market now is bullish they're going to probably now try to buy that pullback and we'll talk about in a moment what happens if they're successful with that pullback but in most situations though they'll try to buy that pullback the pullback will fail giving me a chance now to sell into those stop losses and then don't chase after it you can reload the gun right off the moving average as well right so you've got your failure pattern right and your pullback pattern where's my target target is back down to retest that low right targets back down to retest that low then I always like to leave a runner so my runner at this point would be I've got my one leg my two leg right take that over right and then obviously we don't know how far that pullback will go right now but let's just say for example they pull back up and over right and down that's where my runner would be right so always it all depends on how far we get that pullback right in all honesty now another scenario here that you want to keep an eye on is if we go sideways down here you know, you might be thinking, well, Joe, don't you always say this? Anytime a market moves this far, that fast, a lot of times it'll start going sideways. And the reason why has to do with the old trading terms, accumulation and distribution, right? The sellers take profit, 
which is buying, right? But the problem is the market's so bearish, the sellers keep on sopping it right up, right? You know, think about it, right? The market takes off the downside for whatever reason, right? The, the sellers are taking profit. And so price keeps popping up. But the bears go, oh, great, sell it. And it goes back down. They take their profit. It pops up. No, sell it. No, back down. No, sell it, right? And it goes, and it goes sideways inside of a range, right? Again, if you, if you were to read some of the old school trading books, right, they would call that accumulation, right, and distribution, right? The sellers are getting out. They're buyers, right? The sellers then are getting back in, right? The buyers are trying to buy down here. Meanwhile, the time it goes up, the sellers are trying to sell as it goes. So moral of the story is if we see it going sideways here, that confirms there's still a very healthy appetite for the short side. The problem is I don't want to sell into the low of that range. So what do I do? I look for a chance to sell, to sell high, right? Same thing. Now, if we see a range bound market though, what you want to remember is you want to look for what I call the two try failure. And that is you want to go up, let the buyers try once, let the buyers try twice, and then we'll sell into that second attempt, right? Let the buyers try once, let the buyers try twice. Now, now this comes in all shapes and sizes, and I have a very specific set of rules for this, and we'll talk about those rules, right, in the trade room tomorrow using our trading checklist. But that's the idea, right? The idea here is, if we start seeing it go sideways, let them go up, let the buyers try again, then we know exactly where their stops are and we're selling right into those stop losses. Now, what if the market keeps going lower? If it keeps going lower, nothing really changes, right? If it keeps going lower, now it's just we're waiting for the pullback, we're waiting for the buyers to try into the failure pattern, right, into that pullback and back down again, right? Failure setup into a pullback setup and a sell back down and again same right same rules will apply but I know what you're thinking are you crazy man you're trying to sell this market this is a bull market Joe look at this puppy right it's a big bull run and you're absolutely right right there is potential that this thing could just snap right and go right back up to retest that high but as you can see though this market looks pretty angry right now it doesn't look happy right to be going higher here it looks like those buyers right have some sort of tip now they might be trying to get back to that 5911 right that 5911 was that flash right that flash we saw last week right that was that kind of news rally we saw off that inventory report right so they might be trying to come down to that 5911 area and then send it higher but guys how do you know when how do I know as the market goes higher, don't I want to sell this? So how do we know when it's a good time to be a buyer? I have a very specific pattern for that. It's called the one, two, three reversal. Here's the first step. First step, strong move up. Second step, pull back to the moving average. Third step is a strong move off the moving average. That's the key. Right now, remember, right? You don't want to buy that pullback because professionals, right, are going to be waiting to sell that pullback there, right? That that failure into that pullback pattern. You don't want to make that mistake. You want to wait for the market to turn bullish again. Now, once it turns back to being a bull market, now we can go into action. Mark up that high. Then find a trend line across those two highs. Then bring it down to that low. The trend line comes up off that low. Notice how I draw it. This is obviously an illustration right now, but notice the notice the keys here, right? It's this high, it's this high, it's the major low. That's typically where you're gonna see your most reliable channels, right? Come the moving average coming over, right? And we're buying off. It's what I call a one, two, three reversal into a hidden channel pullback. So that would be the buy here for us. Where's our target? Our target's back up, right, to retest that high, right? But don't be surprised, guys, if we end up going back into that range here, right, and rattling around here for a bit tomorrow. If it does give us that one, two, three, and we go into that range, mark up that trading range, you know the drill, right? I want to buy when a market's bullish before a trading range. I mark up my levels below the range, 
right? I look for my one try, my two try, and I buy up from there, right? It's called a two try failure pattern. So again, anytime I see a trading range, I know exactly which pattern is most reliable. Now, we've covered a lot of patterns here right? Failure patterns, pullback patterns, two try failures, right? We've talked about a lot of different things here. I want to teach even more about all of those patterns, but I'm running out of time on this video. So here's what I'll do. I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner. I'll also put a big red button right below the video tonight. And both of these will take you to register for our free trading course. You're going to love this free trading course. The free trading course will teach you all about my three step strategy how to find the right levels of support and resistance, and how to combine them with my four favorite entry setups. If you're here for the first time, or if you haven't taken advantage of that yet, now's a great time. Grab that link in the upper right-hand corner, or hit that big red button right below the video tonight. Grab that free trading course. You'll be happy you did. It's going to be a great investment in your time, and what a great price, right? At free 99, it can't be beat. Not to mention, once you complete the free trading course, you'll be able to make the most of our time together every evening on this nightly newsletter. Let's keep going. Over to the S&P now. The S&P, as you can see here, has a bullish move into what really is probably seen as a triangle by most people. But I think what really fits the best, right, is the rectangle. That chop, 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 right in the middle. Now, anytime I see a range-bound market, what do we know? What's the word? The word is balanced, right? Balanced is the name of the game. Balanced market means the market's content, right? They're happy. They're happy right inside that range for whatever reason, right? They are very happy with the price between 3017 and 3015 right now. I don't know why. I don't care why. All I care is, is we know the market's balanced in that area. That means if we end up going lower, the market should return back to balance. That means if we go higher, the market's going to want to return back to balance, right? So that's why I say, and it's really important you understand the personality of the market because by understanding the personality, you kind of put yourself in the mind of the collective group of traders. What you've got to remember is, and you probably have heard this term before, right? The wisdom of crowds. Um, I believe his last name is pronounced Sirawicki, right? James Sirawicki. I, I, I definitely can't spell it here right now, but he wrote a book called The Wisdom of Crowds. This book's probably 20, 25 years old. But what he talks about is, is that any group of humans, when you put them in a group, they take on a different personality, right? So my, my individual personality, when I get involved in a group, right, I take on the collective personality, right? That's the most important thing that I want you to kind of understand about that. So when I see a balanced market, right, the collective personality is balanced, right? They're happy where they are, right? And if it goes down, it'll likely go back up. If it goes up, right, it'll likely go back down. Now, at what point do these balance areas break down? Well, really any time we get maybe some news events, right? Uh, a political announcement, a natural disaster, especially if we're talking about a commodity like oil, right? Or anything that might be related, like, a, like, like, like the hurricane over the weekend, right? Oil, right? Natural disaster, right? That has potential to change the opinion of the crowd. So let's say, let's say, for example, tomorrow we hear from Powell, right? And Powell says, I'm lowering rates, right? More easy money. That would change, the collective opinion of this market. And so everyone agrees, right, that the market is priced at 3016. If, if, if Jerome Powell was to say, well, no, we're cutting rates a full point tomorrow, right? Happy birthday, right? Early Christmas, whatever, whatever it is, right? And the market would what? It would spike. Why? Because there's new information that the market uses to assess a different value, right? It's like you're buying tickets. It's, it's no, it's like you're buying a brand new car. You get to the lot and then you realize, oh my goodness, there's only one car left, right? Different information now. Your opinion of value goes up, 
right? That's the bottom line of what a range looks like. So right now, we all agree on value. Will something tomorrow, will it break us out of that value? We get some news tomorrow. I know as much as you know, right? We'll wait and see what that news comes out. Now, I do think it's important right now, just for context, to take a look at the bigger picture here right now. Because the S&P has quite, it's, it's been quite a busy little market the past few weeks, right? Now, kind of follow the bouncing ball here. I've got one leg up, two legs up, three legs up, you got it, four legs up, right? That's a measured move, right, as we go higher here, right? That's a big, right? That's a, that, that's, that is the, sorry, this one, right? That is the measured move. That's the big measured move overhead, right? One, two, three, four, right? Going higher here. At the same time, I can take that one into that one and that creates another measured move. So the moral of the story is, yes, we are bullish, but there's not a lot of free space up top there, right? There's a lot of resistance overhead here that we have to be careful with, right? We gotta be careful on that. What else do we know here right now? We also know, if I kind of zoom back in on this, there we go. We also know that I can take that, again, that trading range, right? Take that trading range. This is a relatively narrow range. Now, narrow ranges, narrow ranges are actually quite useful because what's the one thing that stands out about a narrow range? It's, a, it's cramped. There's not much space, right? This range on the S&P is about as spacious, right, as a, as a one-bedroom New York City apartment, right? It's, it's cramped, right? It's really, really small. Now, what does a narrow range tell us? It tells us that in order for traders to be able to risk small, to earn large, we have to get a good amount of distance outside of that range to allow us to take a small risk, right, and get a big reward. You know, think about it, right? If I try trading in and around this range, there's no open space. There's no place to stretch my legs, right? I've got to get out of that cramped apartment in order for me to find something more valuable, right? I can find a small risk, right? Large reward opportunity when I really get out of that range. So what you'll notice is I'm taking that trading range and I'm literally multiplying it, right, by three and four, right? So you get that, that, that one, two, three, right, to find that buy zone, one, two, three, to find that sell zone. So I'm using the trading range, and not to worry, you'll learn a lot more about trading ranges inside that free course that I mentioned earlier in the upper right-hand corner, but we know we're balanced, we know we, we know we want to buy low, we want to sell high, right, and go back right into that balance area, and we got some ideas here, right, of where those levels are are going to be. Now, most important thing is, is this bullish bias, right? That bull bias tells me that I can be a lot more aggressive buying low than I can be trying to sell high. It also tells me that there's potential as this market goes higher, it may just keep on going until it reaches, right, that big measured move. So let's talk about both of those scenarios, right? How do I buy low? How do I sell high? And of course, how do I how do I buy it if it keeps going higher, right? That'll be a big component here. Okay, so we know we're balanced. We know we're slightly bullish, right? Got that bullish bias to us. Again, we know we, we, want, we want nothing to do with the middle of that range, right? Why? Because that cramped apartment, there's no space in there, right? There's no space in there. I want to get, I want to get out of that range. Now, the deeper, the better as far as I'm concerned because when it goes lower, the sellers are going to come in and they're going to try to sell off that moving average, right? They will. Nice deep pullback. Those bears will try to sell off the moving average. When they do, I now know exactly where their stops are and I can now plan my entry to buy into those stops and then before we go back into that range, trying to buy that pullback, right? This is called a failure setup, a two-try failure into a bullish breakout pullback back up 
into that trading range. Now the target is to go back into the range, but I always like to leave a runner. The amount of the move below the range will also be the amount of the move above the range, so that will create another target for me. We call that the pendulum swing. And you'll see a lot of examples of that in our video classes. So pendulum swing, right? The amount we go below the range can also be used, right, as a target on the opposite side. So target's gonna be, right, on the opposite side. So that's the way I wanna buy those lows tomorrow. Now, don't forget, if we sit in the middle, we do nothing. Next up, price jumps up. Can I buy that? No, you don't wanna buy it. How do you sell it first, right? How do you sell it? I wanna point out this pattern right now, right? Because this is ultimately what you're looking for tomorrow. Notice how we go up, we pull back, the buyers try once, the buyers try twice, and then we collapse back down. See how that, see, see how that pattern set up? That's what I call a nested to try failure pattern, right? Watch it again here. We go up, right? I wait for the pullback to the moving average. The buyers try to buy it once. They go lower. They try again. Remember, buyers try once. Buyers try twice. Keep in mind, you want these at a lower low. And the ideal, the ideal scenario here is, is for that second try to be a trap high. That's the ideal scenario. It's not completely required, right? And we'll talk more about the small details of when we need that, when we don't tomorrow in the trade room. But the bottom line though is, I want those buyers now, I want them showing me proof they're trying once, right? They're trying twice. And the reason why I'm so patient on the sell Right, because remember, we can be pretty aggressive, right, buying off that low, but that's because we're bullish. If we're bearish, I've got to respect that. Sorry, we're, we're, if we're bullish, I, if I want to sell, I need to respect that momentum, right? Let those buyers try once, let them try twice, then I can sell it back down in. In other words, let the buyers wrap that rope right around their neck, right? And, and give them a shot to earn the breakout, right? Because they may get that breakout. So what would a breakout look like? A breakout would look like we talked before, right? The one, strong move up, two, pull back to the moving average, and three, just like a reversal on crude oil, a breakout requires the same thing. I don't want to buy that pullback though right? I don't want to buy that pullback. It's a range. It's balanced, right? Remember, this could go up and right back down into that balance area. So don't take that bait. Don't make that rookie mistake. Remember, we don't optimize based on the number of trades, right? We're optimizing for the results, not the number of trades, right? I say that because a lot of people make the you know false assumption that more trades mean more money. Well, more trades means more money for one person, and that's not you. It's your broker, unless you're a broker, right? More trades do not make you more money. In fact, for most people, more trades mean less money. We're not optimizing our trading strategy for number of trades. We're, opting, we're optimizing our trading strategy for the quality of those trades because time and time again you know I like to use the baseball analogy if you swing at good pitches you'll find yourself putting the bat on the ball you'll find yourself being successful right in baseball if you swing at good pitches in, in day trading right they may not all they may not all be winners but over time right you'll make you'll, you'll make quite a bit of money the key is is knowing what a good high quality trade looks like and that's really why our trade room is so valuable right because I pinpoint these high quality trades with my clients every morning starting off at 8 o'clock Eastern time but as far as a breakout goes right I want a one I want a two right, and a pullback going higher from there, right, pullback and then go higher from there, mark up that high, mark up that high, and then again, off that major low, that's going to give me now my buy zone here, right, and that's where, right, I want to be a buyer. Now, at that point, as long as I'm buying low, I'm okay. What you got to be careful about, though, is if the market just, you know, for example, let's say overnight in Asia, the market rallies higher here. If it rallies up 
into that measured move area, what you really want to do is, is you want to wait for it to balance out. It'll almost always balance out up here. And once it balances out, you know, because nobody's going to want to buy into that level of resistance, right? And once it balances out, I'll use that trading range to identify that buy zone, right? Just like we talked about earlier, look for that one, that two, right? And go from there, right? That would be the most reliable setup there. Let those buyers try twice and you're buying into their second attempt failure, right? That two try failure. Another potential pattern would be a strong move up into what I call a two try breakout, which means it starts off with a strong spike up. The bears try once, the bears try twice, and because you've got that level of resistance overhead, I would personally look for a trap low on this. Let those bears try once, right? Let them try twice, and then again, once you've got those, once you've got that strong move, the strong move will, will kind of clear the way for a second leg. Let the bears try once, let the bears try twice, and we'll buy off that trap low up into that final target, right, which is that big measured move up around that 30-30 area, right? So we're trying to go down, trying to get that failure into that breakout, right, the breakout failure into that pullback going higher. We go up. It's a nested, right? It's a nested trap high to sell off of that high or strong move up, one try, two try, trap and go, or the one, two, three reversal, right? Mark up that, right? Mark up those, that channel, right? And we're buying the low of that channel on the way up, right? To retest those highs and beyond. Great stuff here on the S&P. Looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few hours. And of course, don't forget, we'll trade this stuff together here tomorrow in the trade room. Looking good. Over to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ now is very similar, right, to the S&P. We know we're bullish. We know we have, uh, for the most part, it was probably a triangle by most people's measures. I call this a rectangle. You can see that rectangle fits beautifully there. If I take that rectangle, that rectangle helps me find my buy zone right underneath me here. And then I've also got this trend line coming down over here, right? This is what I call a reversal line. Reversal lines are any prior level of resistance that can be used as support, right? So it's a trend line. And that trend line lines up beautifully with this whole area back here. This is my sweet spot, right? Back around that 79.50 to 79.30 area. So that's where I'd like to get it. Because you can see here, I really get a hard time buying high right now on this NASDAQ. I've got one leg, two legs, three legs. We're running right into that what is the minor measured move. And I'm going minor. Well, where the heck's the major then? Well, the major, I'm glad you I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. The major is way out here, right? We go back here to earlier on in the month, right? One leg, two leg, three leg. Yeah, there's your major, right? Just around that 8,000 big round number. So it does look like that big round number is a magnet. We are definitely bullish right now. But I'll tell you right now, if you if you spend a lot of time inside of a range like we did today, you've got to be thinking most of the volume today was probably traded right on top of that 7970. So in, in all reality, there's there's really two scenarios you want. One is going to be, let's get a pullback and buy low. The other would be, let's get up, right? Let's get some accumulation and distribution, right? If I can kind of keep tossing in that old school word, right? Those old school terms, right? Find that range. And then once we have a range up here, then we can use that volume area and we can buy that pullback from there. Those are two scenarios I'm looking for here right now on the NASDAQ. And then again, if it, if it goes back into the range, we just want to make sure we sit on hands, right? I don't want to be trading right inside of that range. So we know we're bullish. We know we have a lot of resistance levels here overhead. We also know we have the trading range. Okay, so you know one scenario here might be we end up back inside that range. If we end up back inside that range, the, the, the momentum of the market at that point will be relatively balanced. 
Okay, I want to make that very, very clear. If we spend, if we go back into that range and tomorrow morning, you know, by 8.30, 8.45, 9 o'clock Eastern time, if we're seeing this thing still going sideways, we're going to pretty much be a neutral market at that point. It'll be, you know, buy low and, right, and sell high. As of right now, we don't quite have that yet. And the reason why I say that is if we do get that pullback, right? If we do get that pullback, that will be one heck of a pullback, right? So if it does pull back, right? If we get a real strong pullback here, that's going to feel very bearish, right? Whether or not it is or not. And so when a market really gives me those really deep, deep pullbacks, right? You know, again, I mentioned that trend line down here I like a lot. I, I have to respect that momentum. And to do that, I'll use that nested variation of that entry pattern, right? As it pulls back, let the bears try once, higher high, let them try twice, and then I'll be a buyer up from there, right? Let the bears try once off the moving average. Remember, higher high here, right? Sellers always want to sell high. Once I see those bears have tried once, tried twice, now I know where their stops are. Right now, I know where the pain point is for those sellers, and I can buy right into that pain. Now, keep in mind, right? I don't want that pattern. I don't want that pattern right here, right? That's going to be a really tough area to trade because you're right inside that range, right? We don't want to trade inside the range. So deep pullback, one try, two try, and then back up into the range from there. Now remember, if we sink back into the range though, and we just start going sideways, then we make the move lower. Again, that sideways movement absorbs a lot of that bearishness. So now once we make the run lower, now it's just your straight failure pattern, right? Now that moving average comes over, the bears to sell off of it, that's one try, that's two tries. Now we know where stops are, we're buying into stops, we're buying the pullback, right? As long as we're staying out of the middle of that range, right? You know, mama says, right? Mama says, don't fiddle with your middle, stay out of the middle, right? Remember, that's the balance area. You don't want to be trading in the balance area. You want to be buying down here, so you're making your money back in the balance area, right? You don't want to be getting in where you really should be getting out. So those are the two scenarios you're watching for if the market pulls back. What if it keeps going higher here? If it goes higher here, what I, what I really want to see is I want to see it go up and start going sideways. That would really be the ideal because then I could plan my trades, right? I could use that sideways range to identify another support level, right? And then I can look for that one, two, right? And buy up from there. Now, that may not happen, right? We may, this, this market may say 8,000, bring it on, right? And they may buy and they may really run. So, you know, don't get me wrong. If this thing just takes off to the upside, anytime we see a strong move, we know we should expect another leg. I'm going to mark up that high, mark up that low, and we'll look for, right, we'll look for that buy off of that second leg. It's going to be, again, it's going to be required, though, that we get a very strong move up through those highs, right, because you need to get enough momentum to encourage all the other traders in the market to pile on as well, right? If this thing just kind of pops up here, ooh, no thanks, right? No thanks. Let it go sideways. It's too high to buy up there. Wait for it. Try pulling back. Get the moving average coming over. Let those bears try to sell it foolishly and buy into those stops. All right. And of course, if it collapses back down to the range, right, wait for the range one, two, and buy back up. Same basic idea. And guys, I realize I'm going over a lot of information right now. Like I mentioned, I would definitely recommend, you know, lay the foundation strong with that free trading course. But, you know, in the free trading course, right, I don't provide nearly as much details, right, about the entire strategy as if you do it with me every morning in our trade room. It's a huge 
huge advantage because at the end of the day, we're all here for the same thing, right? We're all here to make money. When you join me in the trade room each morning, I'm going to make it a whole lot easier for you to learn the strategy and, of course, know where those high quality, those A-plus setups are going to be. How about some gold right now? Over to, the, to that uh, yellow metal. Boy, there's a lot to talk about right now on the gold. Most important thing, we go, we go up, we go down, we go up, we go sideways. This market's been busy the last few days. You probably have noticed, right? It's quite, quite, quite uh, volatile lately here. A lot of that had to do with last week's, right, Jerome Powell testimony. But the bottom line is you can see we go down, up, down, up, down. Yeah, that's a range. That's a balance area. Moving average flattens out here, right? Yeah, it's definitely a balance area. We've got on my rising support. I've got a, some falling uh, resistance. Uh, and so we know we are, right, inside of a triangle triangle. I think the range fits better than the triangle. So what I'll do is I'll take that trading range. And again, what do we know about a range? We know we want to sell high, right? Use the sell zone overhead. We want to buy low, right? And again, the size of that range determines where my buy zones and my sell zones are, right? You'll learn more about that in our video classes. And of course, I'll kind of demonstrate how to do it every day in our trade room. What are the best patterns for these ranges? Right? Well, first of all, what direction bias do we have right now? What do you think? Uh, you know, looking at the chart right now, if you were to look at the chart like this, I would say you're pretty much neutral, right? We go down, we go up, we go down. It looks like we're pretty much neutral. But when you look at it a little bit wider here, I've got to give the edge to the buyers, right? You've got this huge run up. You know these buyers, right? And, and again, if it wasn't for this big move lower, this would be obvious, right? But, you know, that big move lower, they kind of evaporated, it ran back up. The buyers want to get back to retest that high, bottom line, right? The buyers definitely want to go back to retest that high. The sellers, they want to go back down to retest that low. So I'm prepared to be a buyer down here, but I don't really want to be a seller up there, right? Because you can definitely see it's it's bullish, right? It's bullish. Um, the only selling I would do up there would be taking profit, right, on a long position. So we got our range, right? Buy low, sell high. We know we have that slight bull bias, right? That that slight bull bias. It's kind of like it's kind of like neutral bullish, right? It's 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 a little bit darker, right? Or a little bit more bullish, right? Than just a balanced market. So what else can I do here? Well, this tr this trend line coming down, I can use that as kind of a hidden level of support, right? Same thing here, trend line coming up, right? Hidden level of resistance. That's why I said there's a, there's a lot to look at, right, on this chart right now. So if I kind of get rid of the those just for just kind of keep it you know just kind of simplify the whole thing for us right there right you can see what i'm talking about now now you can see kind of where that range is and where we are so we know we're bullish right i want to see us try to make a run lower i want that moving out remember it's a balanced market right balanced market let those bears try to sell off the moving average at that point you know where those stops are we're buying into those stops don't trade inside the middle, wait for that pullback, right? And buy outside the middle, right? It's called a failure pattern with that pullback pattern. Remember, stay out of the middle, right? Stay out of the middle. What if we go higher here? What are some options going higher? Option number one to be a seller is the nested, right? The nested, the one, the two, and the sell back down, right? We learned about that already. We call these nested failures. Why do I wait a little bit more for the sell? Because of the overall bullishness, right? It's as simple as that, right? Once I know these buyers have tried once, lower low, they try again. Now I know if, 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 if we see a nice strong red candle there, I know most buyers are going to freak out. They're going to bail on that and let me take this thing back down with it, right? I, I'll gladly go down with that ship, right, as well. So that's the sell off the high. And then where's the breakout? The breakout, I would imagine, is going to want to use that, that trend line, right, which is this trend line kind of superimposed right up there. So imagine now, right, here's what I'm looking for here on the gold. First, strong move up. Think of a two-try breakout pattern, right? One, two, and I'd love to see a trap low on this, right? Get that trap, 
Again, you're right up around that trend line, right? The key here is it's that strong move. That's the key there. Right, that first leg up needs to be like, whoa, right? These get these bulls ain't playing, right? They're they're trying to make that run up. So we see the bears trying once, they try twice, and we're buying on the way up from there. Make sense? Okay. Now, obviously the two try breakout, right? The one, two, three. Sorry, the one, two, three breakout. If we do see it, right, make a run up, the buyers come in, right? The buyers hold that pullback and we jump. Great. Right, mark up that high, mark up that high, down to those lows, right? Find that kind of sweet spot. And again, we might be able to use that trend line. I'm not sure yet. This will obviously depend on where this thing sets up. It's a one, two, three breakout into what? Into a hidden channel pullback. Now, where's my target on that? As I mentioned earlier, my target is up at, right, up at that. 29 right point four just make sure to remember right make sure you know where that level is right know where that area is because if this thing just shoots higher here now you don't want to buy high right if this thing shoots higher here you want to look for that trap now one try two try trap low and go right why does it matter how high you are because when the market breaks out it does it for a reason it's got a, something it's hunting for right? There's something it's trying to get to. Right now, the buyers are trying to get back up to retest the high around that 29.4. If it runs, that's great, but I don't want to be a buyer up there. I want to buy low, right? And again, we might get a chance here to use that trend line as well. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right, we'll be in the trade room and we'll execute this entire plan together. Wrapping up here tonight on the euro, the euro is bullish, into a trading range. Now, what do you notice about this range? That's a, that's a wide range, right? It's a really wide, wide range. Here's a great trick for whenever you have a wide trading range. Break it up into thirds, right? I take that trading range, right? And you'll notice here, if I kind of slice and dice this baby up a little bit here, right? There's one, two, right? So break that into thirds, okay? The middle third, is the no trade zone okay you want to stay the heck out of that area okay and you'll be amazed at how difficult that is it's easy to say but it's much more difficult to do right easy to say difficult to do avoid the middle then that also by breaking that into thirds i find my buy and i find my sell zones and you can see how well right they've been respected so far so we definitely know we're on to something here right? We definitely know we're on to something here. I want to buy low. I want to sell high. I want to avoid the middle on this. So as we run lower here, right, what do you think is a good pattern to look for here? I like the idea here of drawing a trend line down overhead, and we might just get a shot to use this for what I call a two-legged pullback. I'm not sure yet. At the very least, though, right, I call those two-legged pullbacks, right, 2LP, two two-legged pullback. This obviously is more than two legs, right, but it may be exactly what we need to do is, that, is, is draw that trend line there. We know we're bullish. What else do we know? I draw the trend line down off the highs. Ooh, baby, I bring it down off those lows. Yeah, that's a great little spot of support there, right, as well. What I'd really like to see here is, I'd like to see us finish off that run lower, right? Finish off that run lower, get down into that area of support, get that moving average coming over, let those sellers try to sell off the pullback, right? Then failure pattern into breakout pattern. Now, on this one, again, you want to stay out of that middle it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to make sure that your entries are outside of the range, right? Outside of the range, right? Sometimes these are tricky, right? Sometimes it'll pull back one, two, and you'll be trying to buy, you know, right there, right? And that's not what I'm looking for, right? You know, patterns like these are tough, one, two, right? Those are tough patterns to take. They're not very reliable patterns. I'd much rather take a pattern like this one, one, two two and back up, right? And you can see everybody was excited about that one, okay? So stay away from the middle, right? And be choosy on this, right? Be choosy on this. Remember, we're not optimizing for number of trades. We're optimizing for the best trades. Strong move down, right? I want to see that failure into pullback, right? And then back up into that range. And then again, 
just like I'm measuring the pendulum swings here, right? The size of that move out, size that move up, right? Leave that runner, right? Target is opposite out of the range. If you got an extra uh, target there, if you get some extra contracts, right? That's your runner on the pendulum swing back to the opposite side. We're also bullish, right? So we go up. It's uh, nested, right? It's a one, it's a two, and back down from there. We don't really need a trap on that one because there's a lot of open space below us. We just want to make sure the buyers actually do get above that range so we can sell. Again, you don't want to be trading inside the range. You want to be selling before you get back down into that trading range. What does a breakout look like? Breakouts, one, two, three, breakout. Sure, it can easily break to the downside, right? One, two, three, breakout. Mark up that high. I would go that big high up there, right? Find that, right? Find that channel and we're selling off that channel. And just so you know, usually that sell setup, right? Kind of zoom in that area. It'll usually be a failure into a pullback and back down. So think about that little, you know, little purple circle there, right? Kind of blow that area up there. And that's kind of the pattern that you're looking for here. As we go higher, obviously higher, the E will be easier here. As we try to go higher here, right? If we do see a strong enough break higher, right? Let's just say, for example, the market just rips, right? Going higher here overnight. If it rips going higher here, watch that trend line coming down and see if you can grab it for a one, right? Two try breakout, right? trap low just try to get those sellers try once try twice remember higher highs on that and you're buying right that trap strong move up i'm i like that setup as long as it starts off with that strong move higher if not right that's okay one two three breakout mark up the highs mark up the highs mark up the lows find that low and we're buying the pullback from there where's my target up there going to be Let's go back in time here and see where some targets might be. Oh, easy, trading range, right? So overhead, we got that trading range there. So I would imagine, right, these areas overhead here, just before that 14,000, if we do get that run up, that will be where your targets are. So think of this area up here, you know, 13.8, 13.900. If you want to leave a target to that 14,000, but, you know, 14,000, it's a, it's a big round number, but it's, it's not a guarantee, right? That range is probably more likely to be the magnet, right? Bears want to get down to that low. So if we do see a one, two, three, that's where they want to go down to that low. Buyers, of course, they're, they're, they're going to try to get back to that big round number, but obviously use that range overhead instead. Stay away from the middle, buy those lows, sell those highs, Guys, man, had a great day today in the trade room. We're going to have even more, even, even more great days this week. I want to see you there with me tomorrow. The strategy is very simple, but what I find works best is when you actually look over my shoulder and watch me execute it, right, while the markets are moving. That's what really works the best. You know, trading is a performance skill. I can talk about all this as much as I want right now, but where the rubber really meets the road is where we do it together every day in our trade room. And I have unlimited access to our trade room as part of our advanced membership classes. So right below my mug here tonight on the video on the website here at schooloftrade.com, I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video, right? Grab that advanced membership course, right? There are plenty of flexible payment options on that. Give me a call, send me an email, use this live support here if you have any questions you want, right? I'm always here to answer those questions. If you're not ready yet to be a member, that's great. Got a great free trial here on our homepage at schooloftrade.com. That free trial includes your free trading course, right? A free pass to our trade room, and hundreds of hours, right, of great examples of real setups we find on our favorite, on our favorite futures markets. Everybody loves the free trial. They love the free pass. They love the free course. I think you'll love it as well. And keep in touch, right? If you join our free trial, if you have any questions, again, that toll-free phone number is right there. You can always use live support right below me here tonight on the website as well. But that'll do it for me tonight. Great job out there today. Excellent session today in the trade room. Great video tonight. We get some work to do tomorrow morning, though. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hope I'll see you there. If not, come back and see us again tomorrow night on the next edition of this nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.